Okay, exploratory data analysis is something, you know, I'd say fairly new to the statistics world, but uh, developed in this in the late 70s, but uh, it's the we're going to use the five number summary. You know, traditional data analysis um, is what we've been doing, uh, histograms, frequency distributions, those are the more of the traditional stuff. The exploratory data analysis, um, the five number summary and the and box plots or box and whisker plots are a resistance statistics. And what I mean by resistance statistics, the resistance statistic is that uh, outliers don't affect, um, you know, don't affect our summary as much. Um, the five number summary that you're gonna we're gonna do here in just a second mainly deals with median. Um, in quartiles or percentiles. So um, these aren't as uh, affected by a, a huge outlier. And so that's what we mean by statistics. Whereas mean, mean and variance, you know, those are affected uh, pretty heavily by an outlier. And so it, rather than sit here and yammer about it, let's just look at it. So the five number summary is basically, if you have a set of data, it's your lowest value, your first quartile, um, and that would be Q subscript 1, your second quartile, which is the median, your third quartile, which is Q3, and the highest value. So that's the five number summary in this EDA. Yeah. All right. And another thing you'll need to know is interquartile range, which is simply your third quartile minus your first quartile. So uh, I love these because they're not really hard. So the number of so here's uh, the number of clients seen by a CPA in an 11 day period. So I've already arranged the data from least to greatest, from 23 to 51. And so let's just find the five number summary. First off, your lowest is 23. Um, your first quartile, median, and your third quartile, it's all Q1, median, and Q3, uh, and then 5 is your largest value, which is 51. So, here we go. We'll go ahead and find, you know, the middle stuff is the hard stuff to find, which isn't that hard. Um, so to find the median, we've already arranged the data in order from least to greatest. That's the first step. I wanted to save some time because I figured you can all do that. And uh, so the median, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 pieces of data, which means I'm going to count up 5 and back 5 from both sides. So basically fold the data in half. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I'll kind of underline that. Count back, one, two, three, four, five. And so my median, or quartile two, is 33. So I'll stick that in there. Quartile one basically splits the data in half. So we, we've, and we'll take out the, the 33. And so now we find for quartile one, the median of the left side. And there's one, two, three, four, five pieces of data on the left side. And so we're going to count up two and back two. So up two, back two, one, two, means 29 is your, is your first quarter, quarter of the data. Okay. So 29. And now your third quartile, or third, this, the middle of your second half of your data, which is here. Again, there's five pieces of data here. So you count up two and back two. And so 42 would be your third quartile, okay? All right, and so there's your five number summary. Now we can take this and make kind of a visual representation of it. I mean, that's really what statistics is all about, is how to get these numbers, these abstract things, into something visual that we can, we can uh, analyze. And so you make a number line, and I'm going to, 
I forgot to do that. So I'm going to hit pause for just one second and put that number line up there. Okay, so just real quickly how I came up with this number line. It's very important that your numbers, your lines are spaced evenly. I mean, when you do this in technology, it's not going to matter. It'll do it for you. But I think it's good to know how to do this by hand um, so you know what's going on uh, when you see a graph like this. And you can also spot, you know, people who have done it incorrectly, especially newspapers. You're starting to see a lot more box plots in newspapers uh, as this, because this is fairly new in statistics. So um, as people learn about it and learn how to use it, they start using it more, you know, in, in papers and other publications and on the Internet. So back to how I did this. Um, so I found the range of my data, which was 28. And I didn't want to put 28 lines on my, uh, on my number line, so I just cut that in half, and I thought 14, you know, that's, that's about, that's doable. And so every, what, every other mark um, represents 2. So if you start here at 23, you know, this is 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, and so on. So that kind of gives you an idea of, of my logic behind making this, and, because I, I am going to want you to do these yourselves. Okay, so what a box and whisker plot is, or a box plot, is simply, now we're going to plot that five number summary um, underneath here. And so quartile one is 23, so I'll put a little mark and label it 20, not 12, <laughs> and label it correctly as 23. I like to then, whoops, I like to then mark my top, which was 51, which is clear over here at 51 and then um, we'll mark the first quartile which is 29 and so you go inside of your you know 27 is here 28 29 is there and so um, we mark it with a line straight up and down and I'll call that 29 as your first quartile and then we find your median and our median is 33, so 31, 32, 33 would be right here. So we'll draw a line directly under that one and label it 33. And then we'll go back here, quartile 3 is 42. So 42, there's 39, 40, 41. 42 occurs in between, between there, so stick there and that's 42 and you draw a box to represent this this interquartile range yeah so uh, where the middle of our data and then I draw a line connecting you know, hopefully you draw a little more symmetric than I did. Generally, this box is uh, centered. Maybe I can get lucky and, oh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah, so there we go. So generally, the box is centered. Uh, so I'll re redraw that so it's a little neater. And so there's my interquartile range. And so that's the middle half of our data. And I this, this graph is kind of nice because it shows you Kind of where the location of your data is. Um, if you were to if you were to think of this as a frequency histogram, you know, uh, and say you had we didn't have very many data points because I just wanted to show you how to do it, but this would be a skewed uh, a skewed right data because here here is your median. And your mean is over here to the right, your x bar, if it's a sample. So this is the median. So we're skewed to the right in this case, just by looking at this data uh, on a box plot. And it, so it, if you compare it to just the numbers, I mean, you'd never see that just looking at this list of numbers here. Um, there's just, they're just numbers to us. But now we can see that most of my data, half of it, occurs in the really close to this first half 
And uh, so that, you know, it gives you a, a quick visual representation of what the numbers really look like. Um, you know, even though we've, she, we, the CPA has had up to 51 clients in, in 11 days, most of the time, uh, over half the time, she's below 33 clients, or he, whoever. And so you, you can kind of see what's going on. You get a better picture of what's going on in the data. And so that's a box and whisker plot or a box plot. And, uh, and that, that'll do it. That's the number, uh, excuse me, let me go back. So that's exploratory data for the most part. We'll get into some more later. But the five number summary, box plots, and interquartile range. And I guess I boxed out interquartile range, but it is quartile three minus quartile one, which, you know, if you just look at the data, is 42 minus 29. So IR, interquartile range, 42 minus uh, 29. And 42 minus 29 is 13. I suppose I could have done that, but so there's your interquartile range of 13 clients, if you think about this in terms of clients in an 11-day period. So there you have it. Um, I guess one last thing, if let's say you had, uh, you know, just to represent sh shape. Of the data, you know, now if let's say you had a box plot like this, where everything's, you know, your median is to the right, so this would be skewed left data. So if this was a frequency histogram, your data would look more like this, where your median's here and your and your uh, mean is here. So this would be skewed left data. And then the really nice one, and let's see if I can do it, the one we'll be eventually talking about a lot, is symmetrical data, symmetric data, where the box is right in the center, your interquartile range is right in the center, and your median is right in the center. And so this would be normally distributed data. So, you know, if this was a frequency histogram, that's somewhat what you're, you'd have that nice, uh, ghost shape or bob on bob on monster i think it's on monsters incorporated or something like that <laughs> so all right hope this helps and see you next time good luck